Hare Krishna, welcome. Today we'll be reading from the Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, chapter 2. The chapter is entitled Divinity and Divine Service. Today we'll be discussing text number 5. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Munaya Saruprishtoham Vavad Birloka Mangalam Yakrita Krishna Samprasno Yenatma Suprasidati Translation and purport by His Divine Grace, A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. O sages, I have been justly questioned by you. Your questions are worthy because they relate to Lord Krishna and so are of relevance to the world's welfare. Only questions of this sort are capable of completely satisfying the self. Purport. The whole world is full of questions and answers. The birds, beasts, and men are all busy in the matter of perpetual questions and answers. In the morning, the birds in the nest become busy with questions and answers. And in the evening, the same birds also come back again and begin with questions and answers. The human being, unless he is fast asleep at night, is busy with questions and answers. The businessmen in the marketplace are busy with questions and answers. And so also the lawyers in the court and the students in the schools and colleges. The legislators in the parliament are also busy with questions and answers. And the politicians and the press representatives are all busy with questions and answers. Although they go on making such questions and answers for their whole lives, they are not at all satisfied. Satisfaction of the soul can only be obtained by questions and answers on the subject of Krishna. Om Agana Timirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chakshuram Militangena Tasmai Shri Guru Venamaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bishtam Stapitam Gena Bhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadati Swapadantikam Mandeham Shri Guru Shri Uta Parakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Shcha Shri Rupam Sagrajatam Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lalita Shri Vishakan Vitamscha He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagapate Gopisha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurange Radhe Vrindavanishwari Rishabhanu Sute Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vansha Kalpa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bevacha 
Patitanam Pavanebio Vaishnavebio Namo Namaha Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadhara Shiva Zadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama Ramo Ramo Hare Hare So today's verse <clears throat> is about questions and answers. Questions are a way of guiding us. In fact, our whole life from the beginning is simply a quest. Um, as Srila Prabhupada mentions in the purport, uh, from the time a child is young and able to speak, immediately the questions begin. Immediately we're looking for something. Immediately there is a quest. means uh, a movement or a search to a destination to find something that will please uh, or satisfy us, uh, give us solace. Uh, questions means moving from ignorance and answers means finding some enlightenment or some solution. Questions means problems. Uh, answers means solutions. So life is riddled with uh, a constant flow of difficulties, uh, challenges, problems uh, for which we must develop and cultivate questions and hope and pray or seek out uh, that person who can give us answers and solutions to those problems. What are the primary problems for everyone uh, in this material world? Simply uh, four, birth, death, disease, and old age. These four primary problems are there for everyone, no matter who you are, from the tiniest ant up to Lord Brahma, uh, Abrahma Bhuvana Loke, that from the smallest living entity up to the highest, uh, this material world is a place of uh, death, a place of suffering, ultimately a disease where everyone is growing old. Um, from the moment that we're born, one thing is for certain, that is that we're getting older. No one can avoid these four difficulties. Uh, old age, disease, death, and birth is a very, although a celebrated experience, but uh, for the mother, if you ask the mother, um, then birth is actually something that is quite a serious tribulation and difficulty. Uh, most ladies, after giving birth, they say that they will never do that again. And then some months later, after holding the child in their arms, the nature of the illusory energy covers them over and immediately they're thinking, oh, when will I have another child? Because we experience in life that no matter how difficult uh, some situations are for us, we don't always learn. Uh, no matter what the challenge is or, or how much pain it's caused, we seem to carry on not actually learning a lesson from it. So this purport is explaining to us the necessity of developing and cultivating good questions. From the beginning of the Vedas, uh, Atato Brahma Jigyasa, the question is there, who am I? What am I doing here? What is the purpose of this life? What is the goal and mission of my existence, of my being present here in this world? What am I doing here? What will I do? What should I do? What is the best thing to do? These types of questions are there. Many of us ask these questions in our youth, and as we get older, we forget. We stop asking the questions, maybe thinking, there is no answer to these questions. Simply, the goal of life is to work hard, uh, like a donkey, and, you know, then die. But actually, that's not the goal of life. The goal of life is to find the answers to these questions. 
Aham Brahmasmi means that I am Brahman, I am spirit soul, I am eternal, I am eternally uh, uh, the, the servant of Krishna, Jivara Swarupoi Krishnara Nichadas. I am the eternal servant of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. These types of questions and answers are the questions that one should be developing and cultivating in life. Tadvidi prani patena, pari prasnena sevya, upadek shanti te gyanam, gyaninas tapva darshanaha. The living entity should develop a desire to understand uh, what is his or her purpose in this world, in this life. And with that desire to understand, one should seek out someone who can give those answers. Many people uh, throughout uh, the ages have, have sought answers to these pertinent and important questions of who am I and what is my purpose? Who is God? Is there God? And in that seeking, because of the sincere desire, then they may be led to a, a spiritual teacher. We're searching for that bona fide, that qualified person, that qualified spiritual teacher who can give us the answers that can allow us and enable us to actually discover who we are. Once Srila Prabhupada was um, approached by a disciple or a young man who asked him, um, Swamiji, can you please uh, make me self-realized? And Srila Prabhupada's response to him was that, I cannot make you self-realized, but I can give you the tools by which you can realize yourself. So Srila Prabhupada was very clear in his, his understanding and message that he could give the tools, but actually the hard work and effort remains in our hands. It's not that the bona fide spiritual master can wave a magic wand over you and make you a realized soul. You have to make the endeavor. Time and time again, Srila Prabhupada would explain that by, for one who is serious and sincere, then one can make spiritual advancement. So we must apply ourselves in a very serious and sincere way. So this process of questions, we must approach a spiritual master and inquire. Now how are the questions meant to be asked? The questions are meant to be asked in the same way that Srila Rupa Goswami and Sanatana Goswami, when they approached Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they also had questions. They offered prostrated obeisances, and it's described that with straw between their teeth, they began to explain to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that I, we are lower than straw in the street. We are lower than Jagai and Madai. We are so fallen. We have, we have accepted positions that are despicable, and now we are realizing that we know nothing. The reason that we're so fallen is because people say that we are learned. People say that we are intellectuals, that we are, we are great, great personalities. And we believe them. We accept them. And that is why we are so fallen and so low. Because we accept what they're saying. But now we realize that actually we're not. And therefore we've come to you and submissively, we are presenting ourselves before you, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, and we are saying, we are simply fools. We know nothing. We, we need answers. We need you to tell us who we are. What does this mean? This means that they have, they, it doesn't mean that they've just given up all their intelligence and that they've become some brainwashed idiots. No, what does it mean? It means that they've accepted that they don't have absolute intelligence and absolute knowledge. The difficulty is, is that we become possessed by false ego, which makes us think that we know everything, makes us think that we know it all. So many times we've had experiences where we sit in conversations and before a person has even completed a sentence, we're already contemplating in our mind a response. We don't pay attention. We don't even listen. Why? 
because we already think we know and we're just preparing ourselves to give an answer and to either show up that other person uh, or better him um, in a sense to prove ourselves more right. This is called the false ego that we're constantly trying to uh, better up ourselves over another person. But the mood of Sanatana Goswami and Srila Rupa Goswami was to present themselves as, as humble souls. How did they question Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? In a mood of submissiveness. With submissive inquiry, they approached the spiritual master. And with that inquiry, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he begged them, please get up. Please get up. And he embraced them with tears in his eyes. And he explained that your humility is breaking my heart. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he bestowed so much mercy upon these two individuals. Why? Because of their humble and submissive inquiry. Shiva Krishnadas Kaviraj Goswami explains, Trinata Pisuniche Na, Tuura Pisahishnu Na, Amani Na, Mani Dena. Kirtaniya Sadahari. That one can chant the holy names of the Lord constantly, but one must develop four qualifications. What are these qualifications? The qualifications of humility. One should be more humble than the straw in the street. One has to become tolerant, more tolerant than a tree. Amani na mani dena. That one should. Um, Consider that I, I deserve no respect at all, but actually I should respect everyone else. So if I respect someone else and they show me no respect, usually that's very difficult for us. If, we, if we're not shown respect, then immediately we'll disrespect someone else. But the mood of a, a, a sadhu, the mood of a serious practitioner is that he'll still respect even if someone disrespects him. So this mood is the mood that we're trying to adopt with our inquiry. Now what do we have here in the pages of the Bhagavatam? Well, Sutta Goswami, he, is, he has been chosen to, to speak the Bhagavatam. And there's an amazing long story of how he was selected. We, we can understand the, who his father uh, Roma Harsha and Sutta, he was the first person in this instance uh, in the Naimisharanya forest to be chosen to speak the Bhagavat. But he was sitting on the Vyasa sun in the assembly of great sages. He had just been selected uh, to, to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam and he had been blessed with a long life. And who walks into the assembly? Lord Balaram. And when Balaram enters the assembly, everyone stands up. It's described that when a great soul enters the room, you should stand. And it should be an automatic uh, reaction because the life airs within the body, they immediately rise and they cause you to stand out of natural respect for a great soul. So everyone in the room stood up when Lord Balaram entered. Everyone, that is, except Romaharsha and Sutta. And Romaharsha and Sutta, he remained seated on the Vyasa sun and he was thinking that he didn't need to stand and show his appreciation or any respect necessarily to Lord Balaram because uh, he had the seat of Vyasa and he had been chosen by the assembly of great sages to speak the Bhagavad. So there was no need. Well, Lord Balaram immediately recognized something within him, some frailty in his, uh, his learning and understanding. And Lord Balaram approached him and he, he spoke to him some very pertinent and important words of instruction. He explained that although you are seated here before this great assembly of sages and you have been chosen to speak the Bhagavad, and because you are a disciple of Srila Vyasadeva and you have become very well versed and expert in the, in the teachings of Srila Vyasadeva, he said, but because you have not developed humility, 
you are simply like an actor who is repeating his lines. Therefore, the words that you speak, because you have not developed the qualities and the characteristics, therefore, your words are useless. And with that, he picked up one piece of kusha grass and he finished Romaharshan Sutta off. Now, of course, this was a devastating episode in the middle of an arena of great sages who were there to hear uh, the Srimad Bhagavatam. And the sages expressed to Balaramji that, you know, my dear Lord, we had just blessed this, this soul with long life and to speak the Bhagavatam, so now what? And Lord Balaram immediately, he responded and he said that he would therefore convey the blessing to his son, Sutta Goswami. So therefore, Sutta Goswami uh, became the chosen person to speak the Srimad Bhagavatam. And here, in this section of the Bhagavatam, we have Sutta Goswami, who is speaking to the sages of Naimisharanya, who have just uh, poised several questions to him. And he's, he is so happy. This is the interesting um, interaction between the spiritual master and disciple or devotees, machchita magata prana, bodhiyanta prasparam, katiyantas chamam nicham, tushanti cha ramanti cha. That the devotees, they derive such satisfaction and bliss, such enlivenment comes when they speak and converse with one another about Krishna. And Sutta Goswami, he's so pleased, he's so happy because He's being asked questions, which he knows he will be, he'll have the opportunity to speak. And with that speaking, they will also develop more questions, and the questions and answers will go on. And this questions and answers uh, session is so enlivening, because the soul becomes so happy in a connection and realization of its eternal relationship of our eternal relationship with Krishna, with God. This is the whole process of yoga, to reunite ourselves with Krishna. We have become disconnected. And the process of reconnecting is so inspiring and so enlivening that when we hear topics of Krishna consciousness, within us the soul awakens and we want to hear more and more and more. And Sutta Goswami, he's planning to go on for many, many, many years. And he's talking and speaking the, the, the Srimad Bhagavatam, which is a conversation between a man on the verge of death and uh, Shukadev Goswami. And they're going to have a conversation for seven days and seven nights without eating, without sleeping, without any interruption, with a constant um, uh, exchange of topics of Krishna, which will enliven and enthrall not only those two, but an entire assembly of sages and sadhus and great souls who are just completely captivated. Because this quest of the soul the quest of the living entity is ultimately to find ourselves reconnected and reinstated in our eternal position with Krishna. So topics of Krishna are the perfection of hearing, are the perfection of speaking. So more and more we should want to hear about these topics of Krishna. We should want to hear about Krishna's pastimes. And in the next the next verse, the first questions of the sages will be answered uh, and uh, Sutta Goswami uh, will deliver such uh, a brilliant answer to this question. So I would like to encourage all of you to please keep coming back again and again and again to hear these topics. Make time for it in your busy lives. There are so many distractions and obstacles to hearing Krishna Kata. 
The world it has been set up and built in order to distract us away from the goal of life. Please overcome these distractions, overcome these obstacles, and take time, make time to do the most important thing, which is to cultivate your relationship with the Supreme, to cultivate your relationship with God, to cultivate your relationship with Krishna, the all-attractive Supreme Personality of Godhead. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna.